Remembering William Moots, the life of a young teen cut short by raging floodwaters, the memorial and tributes keeping his memory alive. And bracing for Isaac, weather and politics make headlines in one. The precautions the Republican National Convention is taking before the storm hits. Plus, the sun is rising, moisture is still in the atmosphere as temps creep back up towards triple digits. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sheree Hundreds of people are remembering the life of 17-year-old William Moots. He died earlier this week during the storms. Wednesday, Will and his friends were walking by the Pittman Wash during the flash flooding when he accidentally fell in. Hundreds of volunteers joined the search to help locate him. A group of his close friends found his body yesterday morning near Sam Boyd Stadium. Will would have been a senior at Green Valley High School this year. Brian Brennan was there last night for a candlelight vigil in his memory. Left of 600 candles were handed out at Green Valley High School for the vigil to honor William Moots. It's kind of weird that he's gone now. It's kind of hard to grasp. William had a lot of friends. Many wore blue, his favorite color, as a sign of solidarity. They say when they think of him, they think of his smile and how he made them feel. He was like that friend that always wanted to do stuff. He was always like happy-go-lucky. Like you never saw him without a smile. He just made everybody's day with, like everybody said, his smile was so big. It was very fun. I loved being around him. He always made me smile when I had bad days. Friends say William got along with everyone and was involved in choir, wrestling, and the scouts. With the choir, those people are like family. Us wrestlers, we're like family. Everybody, this whole school is like family. Friends say William loved riding his motorcycle, and they wish he could have seen all the people that cared about him in the tribute at the end of the vigil. He would have loved it. William was supposed to graduate this year, but instead his mother received an honorary diploma. One of the gestures friends say will help them get through this hard time. Nice to see all these people supporting him, even people that don't even know him. Wow, that was Brian Brennan reporting. The school says grief counselors will be available tomorrow. Well, several cases of fake pot is now off the streets after a traffic stop in Summerlin yesterday. Metro's narcotics agent sees cases of the drug known as K2 or Spice from a home near Sahara and Hualapai. They obtained a search warrant for the home after officers stopped a vehicle earlier in the afternoon. Officers say a few people are detained but not under arrest at this time. Some synthetic marijuana formulas are still legal, so the drugs must first be sent to a lab. Well, several people pinned down a driver of a, a driver suspected of being on drugs after he crashed into a bus stop. Metro says an SUV ran off the road near Owens and Sahara Saturday afternoon, hitting two adults and a little girl. They're all in serious condition, and police say 22-year-old Julio Enriquez then backed up his SUV, pulled into a lot, and tried to run. That's when others stepped in to hold him down until police arrived. Enriquez was arrested for driving under the influence of drugs, hidden run and driving without a license. Well, Saturday started out with clear skies and the sun is shining, but that changed mid-afternoon. Ted Florindo is here now early to let us know if the moisture is in our forecast to stay. Good morning, Ted. Good morning to you and good Sunday morning to you everyone. Yesterday we actually had a few thunderstorms, isolated thunderstorms that popped around the region, showing us that the air is not completely dry uh, for the uh, weekend. But today, I think things will look a lot better. Meanwhile, here's a look at that area of low pressure at South Dakota. So we'll talk about what that low is going to do for us for the upcoming week. Meanwhile, though, we're looking at drier air for the day today. It's going to be less humid, thankfully, right? It's about time. It will be hotter, however. We're looking at near normal temperatures, and then clouds will develop later on the week. Could that mean we'll see more thunderstorms? I'll break it all down for you in your full neighborhood forecast coming up in just a few minutes. So stick around. All right, looking forward to it. Thank you, Ted. Well, Isaac is heading for Florida, and it could be a hurricane by this time if it hits land tonight. The storm is forcing organizers of the Republican National Convention to make some major changes. Now, it's not expected to hit Tampa, where the convention will be, but they don't want to take any chances. Organizers canceled nearly all of tomorrow's opening events, even postponing speeches and the official nomination of Mitt Romney. The Republican National Committee has been tracking the weather, I mean, literally by the hour. Uh, we've been updated and, and have had meetings to discuss contingency plans. 
Well, Florida is now under a state of emergency as flooding is already expected. The storm hit Haiti early yesterday, causing massive flooding there, killing some and leaving hundreds homeless. By the way, our local director of the Red Cross, Jennifer Ramey, is in Tampa. She's standing by and will step in at any moment to help out depending on the path of that storm. Well, he made history remembering the life of astronaut Neil Armstrong and the Nevada connection to his giant leap for mankind. Temperatures yesterday were right near normal for this time of the year. A lot of the numbers are around 102, 100 degrees in the valley. A lot better than last year where we were at 111 degrees. I'll take 100 even. What can you expect for the upcoming week? Your neighborhood forecast coming right up. First choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now, Weekend Edition. Well, the first man to ever step foot on the moon died Saturday. Neil Armstrong passed away from complications following a recent heart procedure. In 1969, he became the first man to walk on the moon on a mission with fellow astronaut Buzz Aldrin. Armstrong uttered the now famous words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. There is a Nevada connection to Armstrong's story, though he trained for his historic trip to the moon right here in Nevada. Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were all part of the training at the Lunar Crater National Monument near Tonopah. NASA used the spot because the terrain was thought to have a lot in common with the surface of the moon. There was also another training location inside the Nevada test site. Well, Armstrong made a Las Vegas vi made a visit to Las Vegas. That is, he and astronaut Alan Shepard, the first man to travel in space, are shown right here at the Riviera. This picture taken, get this, November 30th, 1964. That's several years before his trip to the moon. Neil Armstrong was 82 years old. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now, Weekend Edition. Now here's something you don't see every day. A mountain lion is released back into the wild after spotted roaming in a Reno casino. The Department of Wildlife says the two-year-old male cougar was released into the Carson Range above Lake Tahoe's east shore Saturday morning. Guests at Harrah's reported seeing the 100-pound cat trying to walk around the casino early Friday. When the animal couldn't figure out the revolving door, he hid under an outdoor stage where he was finally captured. Unbelievable. I don't know what I would have done there. Well, we're inching back into triple digits after those crazy storms Wednesday. Let's check in with Ted Florindo to see what's in store for the first week of school. Morning, Ted. Happy Sunday to you, everyone. The temperatures yesterday were right near normal for this time of the year. Take a look at the numbers here. 102 for Jones and Smoke Ranch. Also 102 for Van Wagen uh, College and 95 at 100 degrees. You remember last year, our temperatures were right around 111, 112 actually. So this feels a lot better than we saw last year where we hit some record numbers. Prump came in 99 degrees. Searchlight 94 for a high yesterday. Officially, the high came in 100 degrees. That puts us right near average for this time of the year. But luckily, not the 111 we saw. Uh, last year that set a record. Meanwhile, the water vapor satellite shows that air flow pressure that brought us all that big washout on Wednesday has moved off towards the east, although we have some residual moisture that's sort of trapped here that we've been seeing lately, and that fired up a few isolated thunderstorms for the day yesterday. Today, I think we're going to dry things out, all because of this area of low pressure, excuse me, this area of low pressure off the coast here <laughs> that's going to be moving its way on shore and giving us a dry southwesterly flow, and that's going to scour out all that moisture and that humidity so things will feel a lot better humidity-wise for the day today, too. Future cast shows the chance of thunderstorms not happening here. It could stick around in Mojave County and also Utah there, but uh, as you can see, things are clearing out today, tomorrow, and also Tuesday. We could see some of it sneak back in later on in the week, but meanwhile, Tropical Storm Isaac now starting to make its sights on Florida here. Here's its path. I think it'll turn to a Category 2 hurricane by the time it hits uh, this Florida panhandle here too as well. The problem with this is the northeastern quadrant of these uh, hurricanes can spawn tornadoes. So we could see some tornado watches I think issued on the western portions of the Florida uh, panhandle and the western portions of Florida as well. So that's something we'll be watching not only tonight but for tomorrow too. Rain stats though, we were great for Wednesday. That puts us right near average for the year for our rain. Look at that. 
2.28 for the month, 2.70 for the year since January 1. Mount Charleston today, 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Should be nice up there, not expecting any thunderstorms. 103 degrees for the lake, sunny and hot. Meanwhile, your forecast for the day today, 101 degrees, sunny and drier and less humid too. We're right about average for our temperatures. We're gonna stay that way for the early part of the week. Check out these numbers here. 101 today, 100 for Monday and Tuesday, and then we'll be in the mid 90s later on in the week with partly sunny skies. Temperatures overnight, nice and comfy in the upper 70s to low 80s. That is your neighborhood forecast. Get my weather updates on Twitter at Ted Florent. In the meantime, have yourself a great Sunday. Thank you so much, Ted. So glad we don't have Isaac to worry about here in the Valley. Well, once disgraced, back in the news again. The latest twist in the personal life of former South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford. Remember him? And no, he's not missing. The Dodgers make a huge deal how it paid immediate dividends, and the Las Vegas sports community remembers one of its icons. Sports is next. From 8 News Now. Sports with Scott Bemis. Good morning, everybody. You usually don't see many big baseball trades after the non-waiver deadline at the end of July, but that changed yesterday. The Dodgers shipping James Loney and four prospects to the Red Sox for, among others, four-time All-Star Adrian Gonzalez, pitcher Josh Beckett, and Carl Crawford. Now, Gonzalez should be a big upgrade at first base over Loney, and Beckett and Crawford are both former All-Stars, although Crawford's out for the year after having Tommy John surgery. The new Dodger ownership certainly not afraid to spend money. They're taking on over 260 mil in contracts with this deal. And guess what? It paid dividends last night. Because his Dodger debut, after getting a standing ovation before his first at-bat, Gonzalez connects. Yep, it's gone. Storybook stuff right there. Dodgers win at 8-2. Giants lose. So LA only two back now of San Fran in the West. Good 36 old because they were rumbling and raging at the Bristol half mile last night. Lap 332, Tony Stewart, Matt, Matt Kenseth mix it up. Tony not too happy. Neither is his helmet. I don't know if insurance covers that or not. Then Danica Patrick gets spun by Reagan Smith. No helmet toss this time. Just the old finger point. So who won this thing? Denny Hamlin. It's his third win of the year. Kyle Busch finished sixth. Kurt, 28th. Hey, this looked like fun last night. The Rebel football team meeting with the fans after going through a walk through Rebel Park. Now, even though this team has only four wins the last two years, hey, they're not lacking in confidence. There's just only, only one way to go. I mean, and, and that's up. When you're at the bottom of the barrel, it's only one way to go, and that's up. I feel like we're confident because we know how much work we put in. We, we, I feel like everybody feel like they're working harder than everybody else is out here. Remember, the Rebels open this Thursday at 8 o'clock against Minnesota at Sam Boyd Stadium. Speaking of Rebel Athletics, just a reminder, you can relive the Running Rebels' recent trip to Canada when Chris Matthews hosts the half-hour special, UNLV's Canadian Crusade. That's tonight at 11.35. You don't want to miss that. Meantime, it was a day to celebrate the life of Las Vegas sportscaster, Bra uh, sportscaster Bob Bloom yesterday. People filled the club-level restaurant at Cashman Field yesterday for a memorial to the Bloomer, who passed away on July 22nd at the age of 91. Bob broadcast all sorts of UNLV athletics for the last four decades. He also was a constant presence with the 51s. One of the most loyal, generous employees. Uh... I've ever been around, co-worker, not really an employee of mine, he was a friend and you know, not having him here is really going to make life different for all of us. Well in his honor, the 51s are wearing patches with Bob's initials for the rest of the season. Alright, that'll do it for your morning sports. As always, I want to remind you, have a great rest of the morning. Thank you, Scott. Sure will. Well, the royal family may not be very happy with Prince Harry's antics in Las Vegas, but his infamous nude photo leak may actually be good for the local economy. British travel company Virgin Holiday says it's seen a 30% spike in Brits' interest in heading to Sin City for their next vacation. And since Harry touched down here, Las Vegas has been the most visited location on its website. The LVCVA is also using the scandal as a clever marketing campaign to promote the Las Vegas tourism. Well, I Love Burgers at the Grand Canal Shops is debuting its Prince Harry inspired burger. It's called the Exposed Prince, made up of beef, cheddar, a fried egg, and a pretzel bun. It's actually not a bad combination. The I Love Burgers Facebook page describes it as scandalously delicious.
Well, remember the one time South Carolina governor who made headlines having an affair with a woman from Argentina? Yeah, that one. It all started when Mark Sanford disappeared on a secret trip to Argentina in June of 2009, and no one knew where he was, not even his staff or family. His staff said he was hiking the Appalachian Trail. Well, now he's planning to make that affair he was having official. A statement from Sanford this weekend confirms the couple is now engaged. I was actually born in South Carolina. I remember covering that story. Well, remembering Mother Teresa, the special mass to the late woman of faith and how old she would be if she were still alive today. But first, here's a live look outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning.